Good morning, Saints. Here we are again for our little weekly chat. I wanted to just share with you a little bit this morning from God's Word. Uh, No doubt we're about five weeks into this uh, pause, and there's so many voices and so many things that are uh, are in our inbox. There's the news and there's the medical report. There's the, it's a political season and you can get a mental headache and get really, really um, discouraged. Uh, and I just want to share with you some passages of scripture that I trust are going to bless you and encourage you and maybe uh, bring you to that place where the Lord would want you and I to be at today. Very familiar section of Scripture, Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Jesus says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus says, come unto me. And that is not only an invitation for us to come to him as sinners for the salvation of our souls, I believe that that's an appropriate invitation for you and me today to come unto Him. Many people are heavy laden. Many people are dealing with discouragement, frustration, and loneliness, and loneliness. And um, those are very, very real things. And battling with uh, emotions and uh, getting filled with all kinds of watch this video, listen to this video, and and even within Christian circles. I mean, I'm just adding one video to maybe five that you've watched, and one uh, man will be telling you, one pastor will be telling you, well, this is what God is showing me, and then someone else, this is what God's showing me, and someone else, this is what God's showing me. And you sit back and you wonder, well, I hope God's not as confused as you guys are because he's telling you all different things. Jesus says, come to me. And the word that really stuck out was the word, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. And that's the voice of the Lord. And in John chapter 10, Jesus says in verses 1 through 5, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber, but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice, and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Now, I know the context here is Jesus being the true shepherd and the strangers being the false shepherds, but just for the sake of our conversation today. There's a lot of strange voices that are circulating out there. And Jesus said that his own sheep hear his voice. They hear his voice and that he knows us and that he calls us by name and we follow him for we know his voice. And my exhortation today is that we would hear his voice. Hear his voice. Don't you hate it when you're talking to someone 
and they're staring off into space or they're just not listening or they're just not tuned in. Uh, Jesus is speaking. And I do not believe that he is unable to be heard. What I believe is that we hear so many other things that his voice gets drowned out. He says, my sheep know his voice. You know, when my, I know the voice of my wife. I know the voice of my children. I know the voice of my grandchildren. And one of the disciplines as followers of the Lord are to not only know his logos, but to know his rhema, to know his voice. And when the Lord speaks, he will give a voice that gives us rest, a voice that gives us peace. It's not a voice that will feed fear or confusion or hostility. It's a voice of peace and rest that passes understanding in spite of everything going on around us. Again, in John 10, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep and other sheep I have which are not of this fold, speaking of the Gentiles, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Again, hearing his voice, hearing his voice. I believe that it is in Psalm 29. Let me turn there real quickly. In Psalm 29, that psalm that tells us to give unto the Lord the glory, give unto the Lord glory and strength. And it says in verse 3, The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord in verse 7 divides the flames of fire, I think, of Pentecost. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the hinds the calf. The voice of the Lord, the voice of the Lord, the voice of the Lord. And then Psalm 29 ends this chapter on the voice of the Lord with these words. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Not anxiety, not frustration, not tension. Peace, peace, peace. In Luke chapter 4, very familiar section of scripture. Jesus has been ministering throughout the country and he comes home to his hometown of Nazareth. And it says in verse 16, he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Now, this is interesting to me, very interesting to me, a little sidetrack here before we uh, make my final point and close with you. Jesus is going to the synagogue. Now, we're not able to gather together like we normally do, but just a food for thought. When we get the green light, we're able to gather together. Let, let me, do you think that the synagogue that Jesus went to, you think it was perfect? Here's the thing. The only perfect one there was him, and yet he went. And we know that he went for 30 years. Now, let me ask you a question. You think there were hypocrites in the synagogue? Do you think that the synagogue services were, were exciting and filled with um, the most modern bells and whistles to keep people entertained? Let me ask you this. What could Jesus have possibly learned from the teaching rabbi? Now, I personally believe that Jesus, when he went to the synagogue services, probably would have been the most attentive, the most edified, the most passionate worshiper because he knew the voice of his father. He knew 
the presence of God. And so Jesus picks up the scroll and he reads a quote from Isaiah chapter 61. And he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And then he closes the book and he says, today this, is, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. And they're shocked. Something resonates in their heart with the scriptures that Jesus said. But when he says, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears, they began to say, isn't this Joseph's son? I mean, we know this. We know this guy. He's a hometown boy. I mean, he's sat in our midst now for 30 years, and now he is claiming to be the fulfillment of the Messianic prophecies. Well, they knew him so well, but they couldn't hear what he was saying. And I wonder, beloved, if you and I are so familiar with the scriptures and so familiar with hearing them through our denominational grid or creeds, or we've become so familiar with them that we do not hear what the Lord is saying. Well, let me repeat what the Lord is saying. I believe to you and to me at this point in time. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There's rest in the Lord. There's peace in the Lord. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, I would encourage you to make sure, filter what you listen to. The Spirit of the Lord will never confuse you, will never fill you with fear, will never fill you with anxiety. He is the shepherd that leads us and guides us and directs us. And while we're all trying to figure out what is happening, when are we going to reopen, all of these things, we need to be listening to the Lord. He will lead us, He will guide us, and He will lead you and He will guide you. You are not a social security number to the Son of God. You're not number 738 on your church membership roll. You are his precious bride. You are his son and daughter. You are his sheep. He will speak to you. And I would encourage you, when you read and something jumps out of the Bible, stop, meditate, and chew on that. And let God's voice give you rest today. May the Lord bless you and strengthen you. The Lord will give strength to his people. He'll bless you with peace. You can count on it because Jesus said it. Love you guys. Looking forward to seeing you again. Until next time, God bless you.